Hello Alistair, hi. hello Don. Hi. Hi Andreas. So I'm glad to be back here at uh, St Kilda and uh, I won't say much. Okay, nice to have you here Donald. Um, yeah, my name is Alistair Dunn, I'm one of the directors of uh, St Kilda Holdings, so that's the, the company. We have um, two trading divisions, um, Gaelic Deans and RG Hardy. So Gaelic Deans is the Highland Ware side, RG Hardy is the, the bagpipes manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Um, so we work over two factories in Glasgow. Um, so this one here, which we're going to show a bit of today, it's to do with casting, 3D design, mm -hmm. and print. Um, we'll do, to show some laser etching, mm -hmm. um, and then casting of cap badges and sparrings. Yeah. Okay. So you do the you, you go from the design of a cap badge or a sparring cantle uh, to the manufacturing. Yeah, I mean it's quite a good setup we've got because everything's in house and it's quite mm -hmm. integrated as well. So we are. Yeah. able to apply some of this modern technology to the different parts of the business and the products. Well, I, know the, I know the company's, uh, you know, is, is Highland Wear uh, specialist and also the, the bagpipe side of things. Yeah. But we'll be covering the bagpipes uh, at a later yeah. date, so that'll be a different and separate video. So yeah, that's we'll, more of my specialty, but I right. do spend <laughs> a lot of time on the Highland Wear and, and pipe bands, for example. So a lot of right. The custom things that we do, you know, applies yeah. to, to really everything that we're offering. So today, so today we'd like to look at cap badges, uh, brooches, uh, that kind of thing. How how they're uh, developed, how they're made, etc. Yeah. So we we'll start with that first, I think. Yeah. Absolutely, sounds good. Yeah. So we're here uh, in the design, design department yeah. for uh, for the cap badges, brooches, sporting candles, ski and doos, etc. And uh, and Jordan's here with uh, with Alistair. I'll just let Alistair uh, introduce Jordan here. Yeah, just a, a selection of some of the work that we've done. You can see different finishes. So the the lighter coloured items you see here, there are the 3D prints, which are then used to create moulds for us to cast. Um, and then from that, we can apply different finishes depending on what look you're going for. If it's matte antique, polished. Gold. Different finishes here, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to show the whole process, start to finish, from the customer's idea, drawing, mm -hmm. 2D drawing, 3D model, 3D print, and then on to casting. I'd like to introduce Jordan. Uh, Jordan's our lead designer for the business, so he's involved in creating these wonderful products. A lot of attention to detail. We've got a, an X HD printer. Um, Jordan's going to show us the process that, that starts all of this. So I'm just going to run through and show you how we start the product, our visualisation and some of the rendering tools. That we I recognise that one here, that's one of, uh, one of the designs we did for a, for a customer, yeah, for a, for a band. Nice, yeah. So everything will start with a line drawn that you can see on the screen here. This is the basis on any uh, design that we'll do in St Kilda. You can start to see how we build up the material, build up the product. Um, you can start to visualise it. Um, these are some of the commissioned kilt pins that we've done recent. So that process. Uh for instance, you know, like a, a pipe band kilt pen that we that we would give to you. What sort of the, the, the duration of time from from the actual design to the product being made? Um, usually, it would depend on how long the design, uh, the detailed product mm -hmm. would be. If it was something that was quite simplistic, uh, it wouldn't wouldn't take that long to design. A couple hours. And then we start building it up in uh, the 3D software that we have, such as Rhino and SolidWorks. Yeah. Um, once we have it printed, roughly it will take it about five, six hours. Just some, some examples of uh, ones you've done here. Eh?
So this is the next step once we have our 3D print. Um, once we have our drawing, sorry, we will take it, we'll put it through, and we'll print the product. Um, you can see one of the belt buckles that we've done. Mm -hmm. um, that's a finished one, it's at the stage of 3D printing. So this, this will be used then, uh, this print will be used to make a mould? Yeah, um, so this will be the initial stage right. before you can see the visualisation with some of the products. Yeah. Um, once it's printed, that's the start for us to go and put it in the moulds. Okay, so you'll, you'll look at this first and, uh, yeah. and decide, okay, this is, this is fine for a hardware product, product yeah. basically. And so then take will, it to the next stage then? This will be something that will be a monthly requirement. Um, okay. So once we're happy with it, we can see it on the screen. We can, yeah. That's the process of printing. Okay. Okay, interesting. Quite a sophisticated machine here, then, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can go down to about 300 microns, so it's wow. really small. Detail. Nice. So, so Jordan, I brought this with me from the 3D print and this would be the next stage in the process, so what, what's happening here? Yeah, once we have our 3D print, we would be turned down and start to take a, make a master mould. It's made in silicon and you can see where our 3D print would be once it's vulcanised. Okay. Once we've got to this point and we've made the mould, I would take it over how to be cast. How is this mould made then? Uh, so basically it comes in, it's a it's vulcanised in one of the machines over there. Okay. It's set to its temperature and left in for an hour. And once that's set, um, your, your, your 3D right. print will come out. So and, this uh, is the mould and you're going to cast? Yeah, this would be our master mould. Master mould. Right. Um, okay. And then we would be going into our production mould, which would be the, one of the black moulds that we have as well. Right. It's set to a higher temperature. The next process that we have here is that once we've taken the mould, we made the master, we put in the spin casting machine. You can see the two moulds together. Close. Spin casting It's placed in the machine. The pressure sets the two moulds together and the machine starts to spin. Once we have spinning, use molten metal. Molten metal goes into the machine, goes down, and as the machine's spinning, it will expand and go into the, the, the spaces that we have in the mold. Once that's done, we have to leave it to set for about one minute at the time of down. So the next step on this process is sanding. Once we've sanded the product, the next step would be welding. So the next 
process, once we've welded, we'd be going through the black fast. So it's, got, it's gone from the welding and you're going to a blackening process, is it called? Or? Yeah, um, so once we have the welded product, we'll yeah. be going in through this uh, black fastening. And this, this, what does this actually do then? It, it basically, it it basically oxidises the metal. Oxidises it. Um, so, that, so it darkens the metal. Darkens the metal, right. Once we have flattened the product, we have to put it through the barrels for a three hour process. So Jordan, this, this, this is the blackened uh, buckle in this, in this case, and that goes into uh, it's a, it's a polisher. Yeah. So, so you're polishing this uh, to, to yeah, basically through two, two barrels, two barrels uh, okay. with different sets of stones. Uh, first process will be three hours, the second process will be another three hours. And you have different stone sizes? Yeah, different stone sizes, uh, which I can show you. Once it's blackened in the first three hour process will be these harder edged stones that you can see here. Um, once it's done the three hours and it's taken out, we'll go through a polishing barrel which will have these cylinder ceramic stones and you'll find the product. So, and, and it's, the, it's the same process for all of the products, the metal product, for cap bandages, drill bins, sporting candles, buckles, etc. Yeah. Every, every single product we do will have exactly the same process of brand new here. So, what's happening here then? There seems to be a lot of uh, handwork going on here. Yeah, what tends to happen with some of the products that we cast, we get product flashing, some of the metal will leak through from the pressure of the mold mm -hmm. and we'll have to hand sand the parts off. Okay. So it'll be all about finishing it off with a hand, some of the hand files okay. and the saws. Right. Okay. So that was it, Alison. Thanks very much for the uh, for the tour. So we covered the uh, the cap badges, the kilt pins, the casting, the belt buckles, etc., and also the spawn uh, manufacturing. And uh, yeah, uh, I hope it was informative for folks. Thanks very much for for your help. And we'll be back because there's obviously a lot more to cover on uh, the piping side as well. So. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for coming. Hope you enjoyed the tour and find out a bit more about what we're, we're doing. Thank you.